printing machines. So if I have speed and high resolution. So SRA machines are being used in the industry at the moment, and that is actually growing uh, steadily. So one of the reasons why you want to use SRA is uh, product design and rapid prototyping. For instance, a Gizmo SRA machine, we can rapid prototype something in one day that would normally take you a month on any other machine. So imagine how quickly you can get your products to market. If prototyping takes one day and not a month. Another place where SRA machines are used extensively is, and we printed this model, it's a very, very big uh, tree house. So you can use this for engineering, you can use this in your universities. University students can design something, print it, and see it in the real world. And then they can go out and start working. For instance, this architecture student, he can now work in a company, design and print his models to show the customers. So it gives the customer something to see before they buy. Jewelry is a big thing where SLA printers are being used. And as I've seen, uh, SLA printers normally print extremely high resolution. What they do with jewelry is they actually print the jewelry in a wax type material or uh, it's, a, it's a burn away material. What you see there actually gets burned away. Most of the jewelry the ladies are wearing are probably 3D printed and you just don't know it. So um, what they do is they place this in a, a kind of a gypsum material. They burn that in a very, very hot oven, in a hot kiln, 1000 degrees. That would burn the jewelry parts completely away and actually leave a cavity in uh, the gypsum. They then pour gold or uh, silver or anything else in that cavity, and that's where you get your jewelry from. Now, something we started now in Australia is uh, mold making with a small company. So, everybody knows molds is a uh, very expensive thing to, to manufacture. This, within a week, we created the, the model, we created the mold, and we created the final part for a company. So imagine what you can do. And we actually created this for a very small, it's a small house company. And what they plan is to have a 3D printer in-house where they print five or ten different molds. They can then manufacture the parts on site with the molds that they print themselves. So they don't have to hold stock. They don't, if they have a big order, they don't have to wait for their supplier to, to bring the parts. Uh, they just manufacture on site. And it, this actually costs 80 cents in, in this case to manufacture one of these parts, where they pay two dollars for these parts. So not only do they save money per part, they, can, they also save time and they save warehousing costs. So more making uh, for small businesses, that's definitely the way to go. And of course, model making and entertainment. We've sold uh, a machine to a company in New Zealand and they sent us this model to actually test the machine. So we printed this in about two and a half hours, maybe three hours. So that's very fast. Any other printer would take probably a day to print something like this. So imagine companies like Wetal Workshop, that's an entertainment company in uh, New Zealand. They make they work on movies, um, uh, Batman, and all those other science fiction movies, Aquaman. So they print these models, and imagine they they use pretty good printers these days to create the models, and you get it on. You see it in the movies, and you don't even know it's a pretty printer. Also, the dental industry is using SRA pretty good printers. Uh, Dental arches, Invisalign. If anybody knows about Invisalign, they print hundreds of thousands of dental arches every year. And I think they have a factory here in Mexico. So not just that, but also on the, on the medical side, there's the hearing aids. Thousands and thousands of hearing aids are being printed. So the 
medical industry is using ESA IP printers extensively. So now ESA IP printers, there's, there's three main types of ESA IP printers. So there's the laser and the LCD and the OP. So I'll now start discussing the different types of ESA uh, printers. So ESA IP printers, uh, a name you, you might know is Formlabs. So they have a very small desktop SI printer. Three systems, that's Chuck Hall. He created uh, SI 3D printing. He created laser-based SI 3D printing. And then, for instance, the Bowery, or Y. It's a very cheap uh, home-based laser printer. So the way a laser printer works is it actually shines a very small laser onto uh, a whole plate. So you can see the video, it act, it's actually drawing. So you can see all, where all the light goes, it actually draws the whole image. So it is a slow process, it's kind of the same principle as the FDM machine, where it has to draw the full image. Uh, so it's not your fastest method of printing. This video that we see here is actually of a, a bottom-up uh, SI printer. So we will be, be discussing the difference between bottom-up and top down. Then we have uh, the LCD printers. So LCD printers are very cheap these days. A lot of them are very cheap. There's, there's some uh, in the $200 range, $300 range, $500. There's some in the $4,000 range. Normally they're not very expensive. So it actually uses an LCD screen, the same as what you would have on your cell phone. And it shines a light from the bottom of the container of the bag, and it shines the image into the resin. So normally your air, your LCD machines would be a bottom up machine, like you see now. There's a, a bag of liquid with an LCD screen on the bottom. So one at home and anti-cubic. Uh, everybody will probably find an anti-cubic store here uh, today, uh, and then also spark breaker. So that's uh, some of the cheaper uh, LCD machines that you that you can get. So the OP machines, let's see that. Bulkshake is uh, an example of the OP machine. Okay, let's direct that one. So this is a, a photograph of a, one of our machines, actually a top-down DLP SLM machine. We shine light directly onto a vat full of liquid. And there's a, there's a few companies making top down uh, or making up uh, DLP. These are 3D printers. We make uh, DLP 3D printers. There's not that many companies anymore making DLP. A lot of companies are moving over to, to LCD. Um, but DLP is still very great for production. So there's, there's a lot of good things to go to DLP. Okay, so the key differences. I've, I've been talking a little bit about top down and bottom up. So the key differences between uh, bottom up and top down. Bottom up will have the light source on the bottom of this, the machine, and your prints would normally be upside down. Uh, it would have a vat on the bottom of the machine with a bar of liquid. So that light source would have to shine through the vat, where with the top down, you don't have any light shining through anything, any material. So you would have more power actually getting to the resin. And with the top down, you have, a, of course, a resin back uh, below the light source and uh, the print is upright. And as you can see in the picture, it's the best way of printing. <laughs> so, 
some more information about bottom up is top down. So, volume of the resin that is required in the bottom up is normally a lot less. So, for instance, a four mass machine, you might only need about 200 milliliters of resin to print. So, that only needs the amount of resin that your model will take up and a little bit of texture to keep the machine running. With the top down, you would actually need to fill the back full of resin. So if you have an item that is 100 millimeters tall, you would have to have a back that is 100 millimeters tall. And you would have to fill the back with 100 millimeters amount of resin. So that's, that's, a big, that's a big difference between bottom up and top down. But now we've fixed the problem uh, with most top downs where you would have to have a fast and massive back. Uh, always. You don't necessarily need that. You can have the, the container, so the back you will see inside the machine, the stainless steel uh, drum is what we call the back. You can have multiple sizes of these machines or, or these vats in your machine. So if you're printing really small items, you can have a small vat. So you don't have to fill 100 liters of resin to print a little bottle like that. You might only have a vat this size, so it, it saves you from that. So now, because the light has to shine from the bottom with a bottom with a bottom-up machine, those vats are normally plastic, or they have a plastic thing that they have to shine through. So it's something that can break. Anything that's plastic can break over time. You don't want stuff to break when you're doing manufacturing. Our vats are actually made from stainless steel zero four, so they're going to last a very very long time. Here's an example of someone uh, replacing the silicon layer on uh, a bottom up machine. So with a bottom up machine, they, they have different base layers that they can have. They can have a silicon layer. It's also called a PDMS layer. Uh, they can also have Teflon uh, Teflon layer. So in this case. If you have the silicone layer that you have to replace, that could take you a few days. You would have to remove the silicone layer, cut it out without damaging the van. You would have to pour new silicone. It has to be completely stable. You have to leave it alone. It, it's, it's a, there could be a lot of problems that, that occur when you do that. So your other option is to actually buy all these vats. So these vats cost between $65 and $99 excluding five stitch, excluding import units. So imagine if your supplier doesn't have any of these vats, your machine will just stop working. So imagine you have this three or $4,000 machine, and just because you don't have a silicon layer, your machine stops working, and you don't want that. So now you're sitting with 10 of these vats falling in your stock room, each one costing you, let's say, $99. So you're sitting with $1,000 in your stock room that you didn't really want to do, just because of safety. So here's an example of someone replacing the PTFD layer or the Teflon layer on a machine. You can also see uh, it has to be clear because it's, it's on the bottom up, so the light has to shine through there. And this is a very time-consuming time process to replace the Teflon layer. You know, it can take you 30 minutes to replace that, and you might scratch it. If you scratch it, you have to replace it again. If you have any problems that occur in your prints, you have to replace it again. So if it tears, all the liquid pours out of your vat into your machine, and you have to replace the machine. So it's it, it's a recipe for disaster. Now, bottom up machines. A lot of guys have told me they spend between 15 and 30 minutes every time cleaning their machine after a print. Because there's always small bits that get stuck in the bottom of the van. And that could influence. So here you can see an image, again, the hand showing downwards. You'll see all the little bits that's actually stuck in the bottom of the van. So those bits that are stuck in the van, when the light source goes through those bits, your print won't work. Or you'll have, you'll have other problems. With the top down machine, all the bits drop to the bottom of the machine. So we don't have to clean the machine, we don't have to clean the vat. We've, we have vats in the office that we haven't cleaned for two years. It's people 
when when people come and visit us, they are amazed with we just, we can just print, we print and we print and we print. We never have to change. So here's an example of uh, a Facebook post where a guy had a lot of problems with his print and he couldn't figure out what the problems were. So uh, people came up with ideas. Maybe his map was broken. Maybe there was bit stuck. Maybe this, maybe that. This is the problem you have with all of our machines. There's a lot of maybes why your print failed. So there's a lot of high risk reasons why your print would fail. Another thing, you have suction forces with bottom up machines that you don't have with top down machines. So you can see the bottom of the, the back on the left side is a bow. That's because it's sucking up. It's kind of like a drum. And imagine if you have a big drum and you hit it in the middle. That whole drum moves. And when you try and print a thick like that, the drum doesn't move on the side, but it moves much more in the middle. So that could actually damage the drum. And that does happen with bottom up machines. With top down machines, you don't have that kind of problem. So here's an example of a nice big print. It actually used up a large part of the top area. You can actually see some of the supports are right on top of the ball plate, right onto the edge of the ball plate. And that's not a problem with uh, the Gizmo top down machines because we actually have the light, it's very stable across the whole place. That's something that all the cheaper machines don't have. So you need to look out for if a machine can actually produce a part like this. You can see all the supports are printed, nothing damaged, and the whole part actually came out very nicely. 3D printing factories. A lot of factories actually use public down uh, SLA printers that actually use uh, SLA laser most of the time, but top down is the way to go. So if a factory, a factory wants a machine that doesn't shut down, it doesn't break down. So it just shows you the guys that know are the guys that buy the right stuff. So a lot of times we get compared uh, with carbon 3D in in America. So Common 3D is a bottom up machine. They they cost a lot more money than our machines. Uh, they they are a little bit faster than our machines. And this is so great being able to be compared to a billion dollar company in America. And uh, so there's a lot of websites and news stories about uh, his mobility printers being compared to a company like Common 3D. So, in 2016, uh, our top speed was in millimeter per minute. For a build area, there was 110 millimeter by 62. So that was our top speed that we could achieve. And in 2019, we've been able to achieve 6 millimeter per minute for a bigger area. Uh, so we've increased our speed by double and increased the build area with our machines. So, and we're just working on increase speed, speed more and more. Yeah, so you can see uh, 6 millimeter is the height, so 6 millimeter per minute. So, uh, how do you do that? By machine, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, here's, here's a video, or here's an image showing us printing uh, 8 dental models. So we can print eight dental models flat in 16 minutes. That means we can do uh, the calculation. I, I round up and I, I, I make it sound, uh, well, it's about 200 a day that we can do. Uh, one of our competitors, one of the bottom up machines, they can do about 200 a month. So 200 a day versus 200 a month. That's a, that's a big difference. So, and there's no replacement parts. So this is the wonderful thing. You can just keep on printing and don't have any replacement parts. So here we have uh, actually a comparison with the accuracy, showing the accuracy of, of our machine. If you look around the dental, well, the models, you'll see from, from the bottom of the side, 0.0, .0 means 
if there's zero deviation of the print versus